So this is a video that I wasn't even actually going to post because this is not my design. This pattern comes from dieselpunk.ro. I will leave a link in the description below. As you can see, I've already got all the parts to this pattern cut out. That was very time consuming. Let's move on. Since this project is so big, I wanted to start off by getting everything under dye as quickly as I could. So as you can see, all my larger panels, some of the smaller buckle straps here, some of the interior panels back here, and all the various odds and ends over here. Today we're going to be using a mahogany die. Let's see how it turns out. Here's a close-up of the front panel. Each one of these holes was punched by hand, one at a time, because I don't have a rake that's the right distance. And you can see I've already got one of the buckles in place. People tend to ask me all the time, do you actually sew all of this by hand, or do you use some type of machine? Well, hopefully this sped-up footage here will put to rest some of the ideas that I use a machine and answer that question. No, I actually do sew each one of my projects entirely by hand. So I showed you the other side of the panel with the buckle already in place. And I'll briefly show you how we're going to attach all the hardware for this side. I'm going to ream out some of these holes that I punched. Just using a straight awl for that. Line everything up. Start putting some rivets in through the back making sure I have rivets that are going to be long enough to go through all the different layers of the leather here. I think I've got about four layers total that I'll be going through. Again, this can be part of the trial and error part. I might have to remove some here and there. Get all those lined up. Looks good. Kind of flex this leather for the buckle here a little bit. Get everything lined up. Ream this out again, because this rivet doesn't seem to want to go through here. Then we'll line this straight buckle, or flat buckle, whatever you want to call it. Line this up here correctly. Center all the holes onto the rivets, stacking all of these smaller pieces of leather. Moving the hardware out of the way there. Set this top rivet. And we'll be ready to hammer it into place. Let's go ahead and get this set. Just a few taps. Get that locked down. We'll get that retention loop set in place. Move my piece of steel there, set both of those rivets, couple smacks on this one, and that's it. We're going to be good to go. That side, completely done. This is one of the end pieces and a loop for the carrying strap on this. Trust me, this will all make sense when this is put together a little bit later. I'll quickly show you how this went together. There we go. We've got our D-ring loop there that I'm going to be able to use a clip on and the flap that goes on the inside of the case. This is the piece that's going to be used as the handle and where it's going to be set into place. I do not like this minimalist handle at all, so I'm going to be using an additional strap of leather over top of it just to make the handle a little bigger and fit my hand a little bit better. So here's the entire top slash front panel of the case. You can see the straps there that come down. That piece of leather there on the side is that additional piece that I'm going to put on that top handle. This piece here, it's already been pre-marked and I'm going to wrap it around the handle there at the top. I'll probably use a cross stitch on that. But that's the basic design of the front of this case. Let's keep moving. So if you happen to watch one of my other videos, you know by now that this is the back of the case where I added all these D-rings here. Kind of modified the design a little bit because I had a weak spot in the leather that I was trying to cover up. So this is actually what the back of the case is going to look like. 
And here on the inside is that weak spot that I was trying to cover up. Again, you can check that out in another video. I will post a link to that video below. So here we go. We are at the point where I've got all the main pieces together except for the carrying strap. I've got the top slash front piece of the case here, the back panel of the case here. This is the front part of the case, the underside of the case, and that is what makes up the body of the case. We're going to go ahead and start assembling this and hopefully it'll all make sense. Here we have the front panel of the case sewn to the gusset of the case. The extra piece of leather there on the inside forms a pocket, so that would be the front pocket. I will flip this over here for you, and you'll be able to see again how it's actually the front of the case and not the back of the case. So there we go. Now I have the front panel and the back panel completely sewn to the gusset of the case. I will flip this over. You'll be able to see the back panel now. Completely attached. All my little rings there. Let's get this thing opened up from the top so you can kind of look down inside. There is a pocket sewn onto the back panel on the inside and a pocket sewn onto the front panel on the inside. Now all I have to do is sew the top overlapping front panel on and we'll be just about finished. We're getting started with this stitch line here. You can see this is what I've got to work with. I've got to line this up. It's going to be overlapped as a saddle stitch. Keep everything nicely tightened, nicely lined up. Just keep moving but I'm still sensing a little bit of doubt in your mind out there about whether or not I'm sewing this by hand or if I'm kind of slapping it on a machine and skipping all that, making you think I sew it by hand. But no, here we go again. So here's the case completely done. Needs a lot of finish work still. Needs all the edges slicked up. It's going to need to be re-dyed, hit with some antique, and buffed up with some leather conditioner or atom wax or something like that. But essentially, other than making the strap for it, it's completely done. And again, I call this more of an attache case or a aviator case. I do not like the term briefcase. It's got that old school vintage style to it. Looks really good. Again, compliments to the designer, not to me. I am not the person who created this pattern. Let's get those finishing touches put on this. We'll take this outside into some better light and I will show you the finished project. Once it was all buffed up with the antiquing added to it and the atom wax and all that, hopefully you can see how well that mahogany finish really pops. Looks good, front and back. I actually think this is going to look a lot better once it gets beaten up a little bit, and gets, you know, kind of worn in, abused. So I'll probably be doing some stuff like that to it, you know, just kind of carrying it around, throwing it in the back of my Jeep and stuff, just to kind of get it that worn in look. You can now see the strap. I'll show you how that hangs. There we go. And that's about the way that I wanted that to sit on my hip. I've got the shoulder strap designed so that it can be adjustable, but that's what I was looking for. I didn't want to, anything too long or too short. I think, I think that's just about right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope all your projects turn out well. If you'd like, you can do one of those things that just popped up in the bottom of the screen, and maybe, just maybe, I'll see you on the next video. If you enjoy videos about the randomness of our amazing world, consider clicking on the globe to subscribe, or maybe checking out one of the other videos right here.